Hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. You are watching part of our Center Court MBA Festival. This session will be devoted to a terrific program. UT Texas, of course, Austin, Macomb School of Business. We have two people who are going to talk about the program in detail. From the front lines of the program, we have a second year student who will be graduating this year in 2023, Max Giles. And then we have uh, the assistant dean of the full-time MBA program, uh, someone I've known for quite some time, Tina Madeley. Welcome, Tina, and welcome, Max. I guess I so, see yeah, let's let's get to the heart of it. Uh, we'll, we'll get rid of the nuts and bolts of it first. Uh, Tina, you have a classic two-year residential full-time program in one of the, the di most dynamic and fast-growing uh, metro areas in the United States. Um, in fact, things are growing like crazy uh, in Texas, in part because many California uh, companies have been moving into Texas. Uh, tell us a little about, uh, about the environment and how it's in fact in affected the uh, MBA program. Sure. Um, well, I went through the MBA program. I joke with the students back in the 1900s and uh, graduated in 1998. And one of the things that drew me here, which is sort of just magnified and amplified now is that this is a capital city um, with, uh, we have our government within blocks of the campus. We have um, the epicenter of what's happening in Texas, in Austin, um, and we're right downtown. So our building, our literal uh, MBA building is right at the corner of campus. So you look to the north and you see only the campus and you look to the south and you see downtown Austin. And so it gives our students this really broad laboratory of experiential learning and, you know, kind of blows the doors off the classroom. And we do, we are two year full time and we are maximizing the in-person experience. We feel fortunate to have been able to learn a lot um, during COVID in terms of what flexibility we can have. And we tried to keep the things that we could do much more efficiently with new technologies and, um, and really um, lean into our culture of in-person, interactive, really building that network among students that we see a lot of our alums relying on now, um, you know, three and five years out. Um, and then uh, really taking advantage of the different brains that come into the classroom. We sort of talk about putting people at the heart of what we do. Um, we want students to find something that they're passionate about. Um, we help them through that process with, we use a term called Ikigai with our um, career management term. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, it's a Japanese term and Iki uh, is a Japanese term for life and Gai is the value or worth. And so it's sort of, what do you love? What are you good at? Um, what can you get paid for? And most importantly, what does the world need? And so how can we help our students find their space in that overlap in that Venn diagram. So, you know, uh, it's been really great to be fully in person and getting the magnetism of what happens when you bring different minds together. Um, I'll, I'll add sort of just one minor example. We have um, for the past five years, Dell Med students, we have a new, very innovative leading edge medical school and their third year they do another program um, as part of their medical degree. And of the 10 options, we are the most popular. We get about a third of that 50 person wow. class coming into our MBA class um, for that year. And it's really, and they get a dual degree with, um, and so it's that kind of different people in the classroom that really um, magnifies the experience for each of the students, I think. Yeah, that's really terrific. Now, Max, uh, you uh, had been working in Richmond for General Motors, Richmond, Virginia. You went to Michigan uh, in Ann Arbor for your undergraduate degree. Um, what was it like uh, uh, showing up in Austin for your MBA program? You know, it, it, was a, it was a great experience. And just to kind of echo what Tina mentioned, I was at a point in my career where I wanted to kind of close those skill gaps to become a better leader and manager. Uh, also increase earning potential. But I was at a point where I was looking at my looking at my career and saying, okay, what do I want to do in the next three to five years? And what can help me achieve that? And the first day in Austin was spectacular. I mean, of course you get you get nervous, right? You're it's like kind of back to school. You know, you get get throwbacks to your days as an undergrad, but I was 
really impressed by uh, a variety of reasons. And really it goes back to why I chose McCombs in the first place. One being that the peers, right? The, that network um, specifically, I had many people help me along the way from admissions officers uh, that I connected with that also went to Michigan, helping me kind of showcase why Texas is a great school to current students at the time, kind of helping me uh, kind of make sure that my uh, application was, you know, really envisioned why I wanted to come to McCombs in the first place and kind of seeing what that journey looked like and showcasing that to the uh, admissions committee. Um, and then of course, Austin is very much dynamic as they say it is on the news. I mean, it's, you have, as we just mentioned, companies moving there, but because the company's moving there, that attracts more people there. And, but not just any type of person, but diverse people, people from all over the world, people from different backgrounds. And that's something coming from the Midwest, you know, you meet different types of people, but truly in a business school setting, especially like Austin at McCombs, you get to work with people who come from different career backgrounds, but also from different countries too, which is really important for me um, to enhance my leadership skills. And then of course, uh, as I mentioned, the diversity of jobs too. It was so awesome this summer and even coming to the fall to see where a lot of my peers went for, uh, for careers and their internships. I mean, Tech, of course, did really well, consulting, real estate, investment banking, you name it. It was just really awesome to see peers come into school with their goals and achieve their goals this semester. And I think that's a testament uh, to the McComb staff, our career team, to really help students uh, kind of achieve what they said they would achieve in their essays when they applied in the first place. Mm -hmm. And Max, I can't believe you didn't mention barbecue or music. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we could go on and on about Austin. Table yeah, stakes. Of course. Literally. Barbecue, Austin, South by Southwest, ACL. That attracts that attracts a great dynamic to Austin as well. Yeah, no Southwest doubt about it. Entertainment and companies. No right. doubt about it. And I should mention that Max uh, got an internship with Microsoft. And uh, before coming back for a second year, he had a job offer in his pocket. So he didn't even have to worry about recruiting. <laughs> He's going to Microsoft Seattle when he graduated. Did you know you wanted to go into tech when you uh, entered the MBA program? Thank you. Yeah, you know, I did. And that's that's one of the things I tried. That's one thing I learned from uh, during this process was to keep an open mind. Um, I knew I wanted to go into tech, but I also, uh, based on advice given to me during the application process, I, I knew that I, I would keep things open. I considered consulting, but for me, my priority was um, finding a company whose culture I felt that was a good fit and that had growth opportunities as well. I wanted to find somewhere where I could maybe be stable and be for a few years, get my footing, be able to apply kind of what I learned in business school to grow as a person all around, both from a leadership standpoint, but also from a hard skill standpoint. So I was very fortunate to uh, have gotten the Microsoft internship. It was a, it is a great experience. And I think uh, the tech industry now, it's funny, tech is in every industry now. Uh, but I, yes, I was definitely, definitely happy to to see that through. And it's been great to see how tech interacts with different and other industries as well as consulting, real estate, banking, you name it. So definitely, yeah, exactly. definitely very pleased. Yeah, that's great. Now, Tina, if you had to name what the differentiating factors of the MBA program at McCombs are, what would they be? Sure. Um, I think one of the differentiating factors is that we are a fairly intimate MBA program. So we have 250-ish students in a class. Um, so you really, there's always a new person to meet. It's sort of that Goldilocks just right size. There's always there's new no people to meet. To hide. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no place to hide. And you get to know your whole class. You know, I know the faces of all the students in the program. I'm not going to do the name test every year, but um, but you know, we know who's in our program. So you have that intimate. MBA experience at one of the largest universities in the world. And so you have access to our real estate students partner with our architecture school on real estate competitions. Our students interested in social impact partner with our LBJ um, public policy school students. We have um, our Texas Venture Labs that brings in um, computer science and uh, law students and business students to work on early stage companies together. And so that the richness of what it, what the sort of menu that's afforded by being a part of this large university. And one of the things that I've really seen happen over the last 10 years that I've been in this position is the opening doors across campus and really prioritizing how we can take advantage of all those things and, and build those 
cross campus partnerships that really benefit students. And every year I hear some student who's forged some new path into the design school or, you know, something uh, really compelling. And so that it just, I think that's a big differentiator to, to have access to that full sort of menu of, of activities and options. Um, that's, that's a great advantage, actually, uh, when a business school is part of a great university. Yeah. That's strong in a lot of different departments and colleges. Uh, what, what's your policy on MBAs taking electives outside the business school? Yeah, so they can take two. Um, uh, they have to be upper division. Um, they can petition for upper division undergrad classes, or they can take two graduate classes. Um, they can they can petition to take more. They just have to talk, uh, sort of uh, petition as to why it pertains to the degree that they're getting. Right. Um, but there's lots of opportunity with that, and we do see students. And then a lot of our classes with the law school and public policy school are cross listed, so those don't count as extra classes, those are within our curriculum. So we have a lot of, of partnerships already. Um, and then, you know, the the other thing that I, I didn't mention, because we have a large undergraduate program, we have almost 200 faculty that we have access to as an MBA program. So our students really get the best um, in the MBA program that we couldn't do as the size program that we are. So they have an incredible set of electives and access to leaders. And we bring people in from the Austin community to teach classes um, as well. We have a couple great, um, either people who are transitioning onto boards and out of their leadership positions, um, really taking advantage of that as well. Yeah, that's really cool. And that's, an, that's another aspect of business schools. When, you know, you have smaller, more intimate MBA programs, if a school does have a more sizable undergraduate population, you're going to have access to a far greater array of uh, not only electives, um, but faculty who have expertise in a lot of different areas, yes. including the very narrow fields that you may very well be interested in. Yes. Uh, an important aspect that you may underestimate when you're applying to a business school. Now, Max, uh, you arrive in Austin. What most surprises you about the experience? What did you not expect? I would say, you know, I think coming into school, everyone has imposter syndrome, right? You feel like, you know, oh, maybe my test scores weren't good enough. Maybe I don't belong here. But I was most surprised by how how everyone was humble. And I think that is how humble everyone is. And I think that's by design at McCombs. Like your study team is, you're purposely put together with people from different backgrounds. So you have to, you have to rely on each other to go through your homeworks, to go through your semester. So it kind of, it takes the egos away. It kind of, it takes the pride away. It's like, hey, I don't know what I don't know, but we're going to get through it. We're going to help each other out. We're going to go to office hours and learn. So I think I was surprised at the humility that everyone has. And I think that's a testament to what the types of students that McCombs attracts to university. And then because once you have that taken care of, you can actually get to the learning. There's no posturing. Um, there's no pretending that you're smarter than you actually are. So I was definitely, I was expecting that, but I was just very, pleasantly surprised at how every how humble everyone was and um, how everyone admitted they had imposter syndrome and once once we got past that it was it was back back to learning and it was really focused on that so that was a pleasant very pleasant surprise now did your early experience destroy any stereotypes that you may have had before you entered the program oh of course i mean you think i think every an outsider's perspective of the mba program is that it's cutthroat and it's not collaborative and people are out to get each other. But I, you know, I, I think this for example would be in the fall when people are getting internships, we would literally go celebrate with people. We would go to dinner, or take, take people out to celebrate them getting an internship. Even if we didn't maybe get a similar role, uh, we would still celebrate those, those that did. So that, that definitely, definitely a supportive environment. And I think that's a testament to like the type of people, type of people that come here too. And I bet you, and I could be wrong, but I bet you that you found a more collaborative, more supportive, more encouraging environment in a business school MBA program than you did in your undergraduate years. Oh, de definitely. And I think that I, that's probably because, too, of the, the types of classes we're doing, like our fellows programs that Tina mentioned, a lot of it is experiential learning, like that you have classroom learning, but you're also working with like real companies while you're in uh, the school as well and like con many consulting projects are uh, McCombs Plus program too so you you kind of have to uh, <laughs> you have to work with other people and kind of it's training on the fly too so it, it's great real world experience. 
Now, Tina, the first year uh, obviously is the core curriculum. Yep. Uh, is there room for electives uh, in the second part of the first year? Yes. So um, even in our fall semester, students start to select um, what we call custom core classes. So depending on the route that students are taking, we have six custom core classes of which they have to take three. Um, some of those are, are kind of business analytics classes that are more um, uh, quantitative analytic based courses, but they can choose two of four. And then we have one uh, leading people, leading organizations class or people analytics, they have to take one of those two. Um, many students take more than three, um, but they get to start selecting in that fall semester. And then in their spring semester, they finish out their custom core. And then they also take um, uh, two electives um, that of any kind. Um, and they can do global trips, they can do uh, really anything during that time. And then their Second year is 100% their choice. I always like talking to second years because they say, I'm still really busy. And I always say first year is the busy we choose and second year is the busy you choose. <laughs> right, exactly. um, and the, but they're working on things that they really enjoy. And, and that's the opportunity to take great classes. And, um, and it's just really a test kitchen of I, I love seeing the individual paths that students create with the classes and opportunities they have access to. It's like snowflakes there's no two that are exactly the same um yep. and it's really cool to see what they put together yep now max what electives did you take in your first year and i wonder how your first year set you up for success in your microsoft internship oh no that's that's a great that's a great question I, so one of the I'll, I'll highlight i'll highlight two uh, one of them was uh marketing marketing fellows uh really a fantastic fantastic program where you get to learn from real marketing experts um, in the field, but you test your, uh, as Tino just mentioned, it's a test kitchen. You get to test, kind of test your business strategy, but also learn from uh, executives from companies as well. We had companies like Dell, Samsung, uh, and Wendy's come through and we had to get pitch business solutions to maybe problems they proposed to us in a short amount of time. You have like three hour class and you have to have a full fledged presentation. So I think that really helped set me up for Microsoft just because you learn to have a good presence. Um, one, you learn how to have good presentation skills, but you learn how to deliver those two and make sure that you are not sounding, trying to sound smart to sound smart, but you actually have data-driven insights and are working well together with your team and looking at the small details too, like your transitions and uh, the PowerPoint design. So kind of learn about everything and what it takes to have an effective uh, effective presentation at a higher level. And one of the second electives I took was uh, performance management and controls because I like it because it really destigmatized what you think of accounting. Uh, accounting can seem as like boring and kind of uh, nuts and bolts, but this was nice because it took accounting to a more managerial level. It's like, how do we, how do we, how do we speak on accounting when you're talking with people that don't know about it? How do you effectively cost things to help drive business? So I, I did appreciate that class because it, it was real world examples of how maybe companies waste money and how we can destigmatize it and have effective conversations to kind of translate it into something that everyone understands so you can drive actual change. So those that that helped me out for Microsoft because I was able to learn how maybe how you need to frame different types of information uh, you're seeing and maybe how you need to translate it for others to fit their world so they understand it. Uh, that yeah. way everyone's on a level playing field. So those are two electives from my first year that I especially uh, felt were not only impactful for the internship, but uh, obviously lifelong, lifelong yeah, lessons. Absolutely. Now, Max, if I were in Austin, here's what we would do. We'd go out for barbecue tonight yep. and we'd have a couple of beers and we'd yep. sit down. <laughs> And I would say, now, Max, I want you to look over your experience so far. You have a few, few months to go, not much, but you've been through the program enough to know how to answer this question. Mm -hmm. What are the three things that occurred to you in the MBA program that, that are going to resonate with you for a lifetime? What are the three things? Um, the first one, of course, would be, would be the people. Um, and that I think that goes to show that not we're not only at McCombs, but we're at the University of Texas, and that carries for life. If you throw up the long, throw up the Longhorn in an airport, someone's going to react. <laughs> I, I think a good example of this is when I was at Microsoft this summer. We did not ask for this, but we had alumni from like ten years ago reach out to us, um, the interns at Microsoft from McCombs, and say, "Hey, 
Uh, we see that you're an intern from McCombs. Let out, we want to help you out. We want to help you negotiate. We want to help you with your final presentation. And I actually made a few friends from that graduated from the class of 2010. They helped, they right. listened to my final presentation. They helped me practice. So I think that is a hallmark because without us even asking that give paying it for giving it back, even 13 years later, that still holds true in the mind. And I hope I can do the same for uh, classes in the future. Um, and then I would say as well, the second one, this kind of builds on it, is the peers. So that the previous point focused on alumni. The second one is the peers. These are people that you mentioned are close friends, but also will be could be future business partners. And I think because we offer different things, we came here uh, to McCombs for different reasons. We'll all stay in touch. Who knows? We could be working with each other in the future. So that is definitely a hallmark because of the diversity of people that came here from their backgrounds, but also their career choices post MBA. I think the ability to like grow that network is going to be amazing for years to come. Because if I had never come to business school, I would never have that. I would kind of be still in my silo. And then the last thing would be the experiential learning. Honestly, I think there's something to be said about going back to school and, and learning. And I, I think there's lessons you take from each class that you can apply to like kind of your your method, your MO of how you operate in the business world um, and, and even the soft skills to the hard skills, too. And what I'd highlight here is uh, a class called financial statement analysis, which is fantastic because it really teaches you how to dissect a financial statement. And that's like very essential for any leader uh, to do uh, so that even that semester with that class is something I'll take away for years because it really challenges you to uh, change the way you look at a financial statement, but also how that can drive business decisions too. So those are the three hallmarks I would say I'll take you know with me for life after I graduate. That's great. And I'm sure that as a communications major, you didn't know how to read an income statement or a balance sheet before. <laughs> no, it was very shoddy. You know, when I was at General Motors, I was looking at dealers' financial statements, I was kind of doing it on the fly, kind of learning from uh, dealer principles. So you're right, having, having that training and having uh, teachers that are practitioners that have done it and have been doing it for many years helps too. So <laughs> that, how, do, how do Max's three pair with other students? I would imagine there's a good uh, bit of similarity, but are there things that yeah. other students might say are real hallmarks of the program that really meant a lot to them? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think, um, it's interesting, I participated in building our new building and that exercise was such a great um, opportunity to really look at the kind of education we wanted to do in 10, 20, 30 years. And the building is really our love letter to who we think we are as, a, as an institution. And I think our students would say that. And I know that might sound kind of silly, but, um, the interactions that happen, and maybe we're all just a little more aware of it post COVID when we were coming in in masks and sitting a seat away. And, you know, we stayed open most of COVID, but we had very strict protocols within the building. Um, and so it's really designed for those spontaneous interactions. And what I, you know, Max mentioned the people. And if you ask most of our students and alumni, the number one thing they'll say is the people. And so we try and look at what does that mean? That's easy to say, but hard to define. And I think it's, you know, that sort of enterprising, tenacious, authentic uh, kind of student and that students interact in ways that aren't, um, you know, if Max was in his company, he would be with the same group of people. And so it's, it's those spontaneous friendships that are sort of born out of unique moments, whether it's in the classroom or um, somebody who you find out is really skilled in something because they spoke up in a class that you sat next to them the whole semester and just found out. It's really those that discovery of what can happen when you bring people kinetically together and and um, and maximize that those differences that come together and then when they go out into the world and we see that ripple effect in, in a huge way. We're very connected to our alumni and um, so that's great. You know, and I would imagine a lot of that also depends on smart selection. Yes. And the admissions process, making sure you have people who want to be collaborative, uh, who want to learn, who want to grow, uh, and who have on some level, you know, this curiosity about them, not only an intellectual curiosity, but a, a curiosity about life and business and others. Uh, we, um, one of the, 
things that I always say that, you know, a lot has changed since I was in school, but the kind of student that we seek has not changed. And it's really a leave the place better than you found it kind of student. And we look for that in their application, you know, where have they, are they involved in the community that they're a part of and how are they, how are they impacting the places where they are in ways to make it better um, beyond their time? And that's one of the things that's enriching from my vantage point. And, you know, every class is unique and um, we love the students who come through here because they really invest in the place here. They're here um, and they create opportunities for their classmates. And that's really, really great to see. So Max, give me three adjectives to describe your classmates. Uh, I would say, Smart, of course, uh, adventurous, mm -hmm. and collaborative. And I think when I say adventurous, I think I mean that people aren't afraid to tackle challenges, whether that's taking on a student org position or seeing an event through. I think people are very adventurous and ambitious. I guess you can interchange those words. Yeah, uh, I like it. Because, yeah, we work obviously extremely well together, but a lot together, especially through like student leadership initiatives. And then smart, of course. I've met some of the smartest people I have in my life. And I'm sure that can be said for anybody me in business school, but but truly, I'm truly amazed at uh, my classmates and what they've achieved. So uh, transport yourself back two years ago when you were applying. Uh, is there, number one, one thing you wish you knew then that you now know? And secondly, what advice would you give to people who are now in the situation that you were in two years ago? I think one thing I would tell myself then would be to seek out, seek out help um, and, you know, seek out advice too, whether that's from alumni, peers. I think obviously you don't want to drown yourself with too many, uh, too much outside feedback, but I, I think that was crucial to my process, but something I could have done even more of. And that helps with the application process, but also just kind of giving yourself reassurance that you need to maybe work on something or keep doing something as well. And I think that helps you get comfortable with feedback as well. And then I think advice would be to really envision, I would say to someone applying to the MA program, envision kind of what you want to, where you want to be after school. It's kind of a fun exercise. Like say, what do I want to be like three years after school, five years after school? Because I learned very quickly that applying to the MBA program, you have to like work ahead. You're like, okay, I'm applying to be class of 2023. I'm applying in 2020. I need to have my money right. I have to make sure I have the money right. I have to like have the application ready, test scores and time. So it is, you are truly like planning ahead, but I think that's very, it's effective, but also a fun exercise to say, this is, this is where I want to work. Even down to the position, to your day-to-day -day routine, what your school routine looks like, what your life looks like. And I think having, being able to vision in detail kind of manifests your actions towards achieving what you set out to achieve. So I think um, that's something I learned from the application process. One of the prompts uh, for the essays was like, hey, when you're walking down the aisle at graduation, tell us where, what have you done in your last two years? So that forces you to think what you want to do before you actually set out to do it. And, but I think that that's an activity I would recommend to anybody to do before the MBA, but even beyond, just have like that five, 10 year plan. It's going to change, which is okay. But at least you're able to level set where you are in your life and you're able to kind of reset the compass and make sure you're going where you truly want to go. You got to make sure you control control the wagon and not let the wagon control you. <laughs> well, that's a great essay question because it forces introspection, uh, which is really good because I think the MBA process should be filled with a lot of introspection, a lot of thought about who do you want to become? What do you want to do with your yep. life? How do you live a meaningful and fulfilled life? And I think a really good MBA experience addresses all of those questions. So Tina, obviously, if someone is interested in a McCombs experience, they should definitely go to the website. The website's fantastic. You've got a tremendous amount of information there about the program. Uh, if they wanted to reach out to someone, do you have an ambassador program? Yes, we do. We have our McCombs Ambassador Committee. Um, a lot of students, we have a great graphic where you can see their interests. We um, It's set up so it's a database with their photo, their experience, their interest areas. So you can really find a student that has similar interests and get firsthand oh, cool. experience. We believe, you know, just this is a big decision that we know people are making. And so we want to answer the most questions and, and help people sort of envision their process. 
I will also say our amazing admissions team has done so much to get creative about accessibility to our campus and our events. And so they've been very creative with the virtual opportunities that we have and the in-person opportunities. They're all on the uh, events page so they can see the, the, but we do some mock classes virtually. We do class visits in person. So there's really kind of stacked experiences that students can have as they wanna get to know who we are um, as a program. We've tried to make it as accessible as possible for people who are exploring um, to get to know us because um, it's we wanna sort of see them in that process. Terrific. So if you're interested, go to the website, Check out the ambassadors, find a few people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in, contact them, go to the virtual, the other virtual events. If you can visit campus, you know, if you haven't been to Austin, you need to go because it's an exciting place. You can't beat the music or the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, as Tina described when we were starting the session, you know, you're in the heart of it. Uh, right in the heart of downtown, a lot of activity, a lot of fun, a lot of young people in Austin. Uh, so you'll find a lot of people that you'll have things in common with. And, and in the context of a small, intimate, vibrant MBA experience, which is also amazing because you will know every one of your classmates, you will know the names of their dogs and their cats. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, a joy to see you again. Thank you Very so nice much. Very nice to see you, John. Max, good luck to you at Microsoft. I'm sure you're going to hit it out of the park. Thank you, John. Appreciate the time. And don't forget, just like those alums came and helped you out at Microsoft, pay it forward, man. Pay it forward. I look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks. He's already right. doing that. We're out there. This is John Bernard Poets and Quants. Thanks for watching our Center Court Festival. Thank you.